from Washington, this is VOA News. Malians prepare for Sunday elections and more than 70 now reported dead in demonstrations in Egypt since Friday. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. In Mali, millions of people are expected at the polls Sunday in a presidential election seen as crucial to restoring peace and stability. 27 candidates are competing to replace interim president Jankunda Traore and lead the West African country out of crisis. As campaigning ended, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon called for a peaceful vote and a transparent election process. And head of the EU's Mali Observer Mission, Louis Michel, said Friday that the team has been pleasantly surprised by the process so far. I thought it was a dream. Um, the, first, the first thing I remember, my car came ripped apart from the car next to it, so I was able to go out a door. There was nothing there. It was just a hole in the end of the train car. Um, I walked through it. Um, someone was helping me. I have no recollection who it was. If I did, I would give them a big thank you. And that was the voice of, uh, of Stephen. Uh, that was the voice of the uh, survivor of the uh, train crash in Spain earlier in the week. Uh, that individual's name, uh, double-checking that once again, is Stephen Ward, uh, who gave his account of the survival of, um, of that plane crash. In Mali, once again, millions are preparing for the election of tomorrow. And the uh, Louis Michel, the EU's Mali Observer, uh, Observer Mission representative, said that uh, representatives have been pleasantly surprised by the process in um, preparation for the election. European Union and African observers are monitoring Sunday's election. Tunisian police fired tear gas at crowds gathered outside the National Parliament building Saturday in continuing, tr continuing protests about the killing of a leading opposition politician. Protesters called for the dissolution of parliament. Elsewhere in Tunis, a smaller rival group held a separate rally in support of the government. The demonstrations began after the funeral of Mohamed Brahmi, a member of the Secular Popular Front Party, who was gunned down on Thursday, shot 14 times by bullets from the same gun used to kill another opposition political leader five months ago. A suicide car bomb attack on a building housing Turkish embassy staff in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, has killed at least two people. The Turkish Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Saturday's blast at the embassy annex killed a Turkish security officer and wounded three others. More details on that story at voanews.com. Egyptian authorities say fighting between security forces and supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi has killed at least 74 people in Cairo and Alexandria since Friday. It's one of the bloodiest periods since the Egyptian military toppled President Morsi earlier this month and put him under house arrest. Fighting between rival Arab tribes in Sudan's long-troubled Darfur region has killed as many as 94 people. Leaders from the Masirgia and Salamat tribes accuse each other of attacking the other. United Nations and African Union officials say the fighting is worsening and is a cause of concern saying civilians are affected the most. South Korea is, is commemorating the 60th anniversary of the end of fighting in the Korean War and honoring foreign veterans who helped repel North Korea's 1950 invasion. The two sides remain technically at war, but President Park Geun-hye on Saturday extended an olive branch to Pyongyang and urged North Korea to give up its pursuit of nuclear weapons. Yahweh's Daniel Scharf has a report. South Korean and United Nations flags lead a procession representing 21 countries that supplied soldiers and medical teams in the Korean War. Representatives and veterans from those nations gathered Saturday at the War Memorial Hall in Seoul for the 60th anniversary of the Korean War ceasefire. Six decades after the war, there are still 28,000 U.S. troops in South Korea to prevent another attack from Pyongyang, 
South Korean President Park Geun-hye repeated hopes the two Koreas can one day remove all weapons from the demilitarized zone, the most heavily armed border in the world. Daniel Scharf, VOA News, Seoul. Voters in Kuwait cast ballots for a new parliament Saturday, the third such election since the Arab Spring uprising in 2011. Voters chose a new 50-seat parliament to replace the legislative body elected in December. The court ruled the earlier ballot was flawed. Election workers in Cambodia have prepared polling stations for Sunday's presidential election there. Pope Francis has urged bishops to get out into the world's poorest area and get out of their churches to send the message of Catholicism. Visit us at voanews.com 24 hours a day. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News in Washington.